A cheeky one, so very rude. Do the other peoples of the world know that the self-nominated cradle of civilization is the cradle of civilization? Who made that up and made it stick? It wasn't no Arapaho, no Aborigine, no Maori, no Zingu, no Bushman. I'd not call it civilization. Cradle of empires, monotheism, patriarchy, mass slaughter, the birthplace of elites, kings, gods. To civilize, to make civil. Apparently, this has meant several times to make of humans groveling sinners who need fixing by daddy. That is what was born in the cradle, that imperative. Arguing about who owns this cradle, who is closer to the essence of this cradle, is just bullshit. To me, what rough beats beast slouches out of the cradle is much more relevant. Tell me do. Stop using it as an absolute truth. Make this case to me that this was well done. Show me the carvings and the mass graves and the temples and the peoples no longer here. Show me what it is, what is civilized about civilization. It is, the, it is the myth that makes rulers. Okay. Its mechanisms have always been about who's in charge. It has nothing to do with me, with my humanhood, with you or yours, nothing. It's all books and commandments, laws and rights should be choice, not mandatory, mandates, dates made by men. That is the definer of civilization, mandates. Thou shalt not, though thou dost all the effing time. All those energies harnessed and chained, constrained, restrained, and made quiet and devoutly wished by the quiet. But show me how it worked, how it works. Who is crushed, top and bottom? Three immature cultures invent their ownsome one god, denied the anarchic gorgeousness of what came before, then employed narrow-minded prophets to invent a consistently authoritarian and misogynist civilization to inflict upon the rest of us. That's it, man. And now you bitch about which of your bloodthirsty deities is best. Some of us have had enough. I've had enough. Maybe Elon Musk can take you elsewhere so you can persecute some other imaginative but dependent primate. There's a notion, clearly, that civilization is emasculating. Emasculation. I don't know enough about how the average bloke encounters his masculinity to say that civilization necessarily means emasculation. Certainly, I think our civilization, name it how you will, it seems to be all of them have the same affect. There are intimations of this truth almost everywhere you look, and it damages us the contradiction, the tension between the tolerance and the openness we need to be civilized, democratic. Authoritarianism just focuses masculinity onto the few, just doubles down on us, further emasculating. I think civilization is a good thing, but it needs to allow for a new masculine to be born, an adapted one. Pure still, the authoritarian monotheist civilization the one we have agreed to, the one we would confuse with the two, is emasculating by nature. The male principle is consigned to the sky and men must look up. The wounded boy climbs to find a seat on the right of the left of the big cheese and look down upon the rest. That would be us. That is the order we accept by default. That is popes and kings and presidents. My mother told me, suggested to me, that war is really the only activity that consumes the male totally, the only activity that unites all our supposed virtues, our impulses, our absolutes, our physical, emotional, moral, and spiritual at once. The intellectual faculty is just an escape, a diversion. Then as she left the room, she said, war and theater. 
Our civilization separates our men into our various faculties and allots each with a role. We will present as linebacker or professor, lead singer or waiter. This will quell some serious fears, but the person will struggle towards wholeness. We do. In a world that allows itself to depend on the expert man, the man all head, the artificial intelligence, will be a world ill-led, and our world needs to be led by the head. The integrated one will appear prophetic. Muhammad Ali, the boxer, integrated by dint of genius and will, at least two masculines, and made friends of Waylon Jennings, and vice versa, Bob Dylan and Hurricane Carter created no hierarchy. The man who writes and sings the song sees the holy boxer and vice versa. The IDF might hate Hamas to reassure their God, their wives and children, but envies him too and imitates him. The berserker, the terrorist is the warrior uncontrolled, high as a kite, feeling no pain. We will watch and see courage where drugs are only. It is Bruce Lee and his cat's meow that calls to us. And the theater? Ah, she said it, not me. But I see her point. I stand here and I begin. A little more and than kin and less than kind, Hamlet quips to the CEO of Denmark, who he instinctively hates and who conveniently killed his father in the story. So the boy, the student, the actor can kill, kill this other, then die having become fully himself. The cost of integration, if left too late, is death, and that is what we do. This is the cost of our civilization, apparent peace, but that is the cost. There will be theater players who are not warriors. The camera likes that actor, the behavior, pretty usually. Women on film look like warriors, perhaps because you are more naturally warriors, the lioness. Men are more concerned for medals, the picture in the mirror, until they are in it, in the war, then and only then.